Alright, starting off the video safety first. That is a about a four foot long pole. It's pretty deep in the ground. It took a lot of hammering. Yes, yeah, so and then I have a grounding attachment that you normally attach to a house. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that wire comes in. Goes around the sliding door. It's not really crimped too tight because there's like that felt stuff so that's no air leak. But yeah. And then we go downstairs to my evil layer of doom. Or my workshop, whatever the hell you want to call it. Follow the wire, twist, twist, twist. Here we go. And that goes onto the grounding terminals from our breaker box. Alright, so it should be pretty efficient. I just put the GFI C I just put the GFI sticker there. Just because. Um Alright, so there's a circuit made by Killa X. Why is my hand so wobbly? Ah. <laughs> made by Killa X. Wonderful. This is uh Steven Ward's or Steve Ward's uh mini SSTC driver board and this is the uh, micro SSTC top uh, secondary and primary just because that's the one that I originally did and I was too lazy to make a second coil which I may do later on so yeah uh, it's a Steve Ward design produced and manufactured by Killa X uh, great guy and if you don't know his name already Mr. Justin but yes uh, <laughs> There's my Variac, uh, 20 amp Variac, spent a good amount of money on that, so pretty happy with that purchase. Uh, so I have a 12 volt PC power supply uh, powering the uh, low side of the driver board. I also have a voltage doubler designed and assembled by Killa X. Uh, yeah, so basically I had the idea and he helped me make it into reality. Great guy. Uh, parents are home, awesome. So here's my uh, oscilloscope. Get my Rigol oscilloscope. Picked this up for about uh, six, seven hundred bucks. I got a deal because uh, when I, the place where I bought it from, this is the only one in stock, and they haven't sold it in a long, long, long time. And I was a student, and long story short, I got it for a pretty good price. Lit up buttons. It's a little bit different than the Texas Instruments one that I had before, but it has more functions, and the screen is a little bit more precise. Well. Uh, the screen is a little bit different, let's say. It's color, which is nicer. <laughs> but then the, uh, I'll explain the differences later, but yeah, anyways. Got my driver circuit here, all nice and hacked up. I'm planning to replace this soon, or put this in a box or something. Uh, I got it pretty free of interference, although I think that if I use that a good old fashioned two megahertz uh, signal generator, that it would, I would have a smoother, smoother, smoother output. That'll go from 0 to 120 volt output, so I shouldn't have any problem with anything interfering with that. And it's also completely grounded, so that's nice. I got a bunch of parts that I was messing around with trying to find all the right capacitors and different things like that. And uh, cornstarch for my next experiments for chloride for, of course, etching the boards, which is in there right now. But yeah. Having a lot of fun trying to learn, trying to make things work. So, enough blabbering on about what's going on and time to show you what this coil can do. Hopefully this doesn't kill the camera, but I got my Variac. So we start off, right now we're at about uh, 30, 35 volts. Fifty-five, sixty, seventy-five volts. It's a hundred volts. 115 volts, so it's pretty good. And now I'm going to show you what it is like with the grounding wire, which I have here, that I'm not going to grab by my hand. I'm going to grab it by the pliers. But yeah, this is also what I used to make that breakout point. So right now that's a full power and you can see the interrupter is still kind of working and the sparks are going down which means that something's overheating so I'll turn that down and off. 
I'm gonna check MOSFETs. Uh, meet lukewarm. Hmm. The MOSFET. MOSFETs are okay. Voltage regulators are cold. Good. Everything seems to be fine. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, yeah, the MOSFETs are a little bit warm on the back side, but these coolers are definitely taking care of the job. The entire, oh, this cooler is pretty hot, so the cooler is pretty warm as well. So I guess the MOSFETs uh, heated up and they dropped a little bit of voltage, or amperage, I guess, so. Fun stuff, but <laughs> likes to overheat. Well, I can take care of that because I have a Delta fan, which is 250, no, this is 262 uh, cubic feet per minute of air. It is like 70 decibels though, so it is loud as hell, but if I need to cool it like that, so be it. Or what I can use is these super cheap IGBTs that I found on Newark. Uh, they're pretty good. They're 1.2 kilovolts at, I believe, 45 amps. So I think that'll be plenty because the ones that I have in there right now, the MOSFETs, are at 500 volt, 20 amp. So these should serve me better. Um, the only thing is that the MOSFET, all the uh, timings, all the uh, like the rise time, fall time, things like that, all of them are below 90. <clears throat> Here, the the uh, rise time and uh, on time, uh, overall the entire cycle is approximately 300. Uh, what is it? US. Yeah, so it's microseconds, which is approximately uh, three megahertz, <clears throat> which I think should be fine for the co for my coil since it's running at 600 kilohertz. But, I don't know, we'll see how they run. They cost me $3 each, which is a lot cheaper than the MOSFETs, which cost me $7 each. So, we'll see what happens. But yeah, um, I'm also going to be putting more, uh, I got my primary winding there, that's a 10 gauge wire. So I'm going to, might be rewinding the primary right now, it has four turns. Well, it originally had three, then I upgraded to four, got longer sparks. So, as per Kilax's uh, request and... I'm going to try to put more on, so I'm going to go maybe up to 7. See how the difference is in spark length. And, yeah. So that's what's going on right now, guys. Uh, if you have any recommendations, suggestions, ideas, uh, I'd appreciate it. Oh, and one last thing, the most important thing. Where did they go? My knobs. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, the wonderful knobs for the potentiometers. For the uh, driver board. I mean, for the interrupter. Aren't they beautiful? Got them on sale for like a dollar something each. Normally they're like three, four bucks. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna show you my face, which is something that I don't see a lot of people do in the videos. But yes, that is me. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys on next time when I make my next video or when you see me in the news killing myself because of the Tesla coil. Hopefully this doesn't happen, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, see you guys later.